So, if we look at the improvements which actually diameter do bring to the uh, table and the radius, so they've introduced the reliable transport of TCP or SCTP. I think you're probably all familiar with TCP and SCTP, socket based uh, protocols, which means you actually set a peer to peer connection between two um, endpoints. They then, obviously, you can then, they set up as a mandatory option that you should be able to encrypt with um, TLS or TCP, DTLS for SCTP. There is some talk about IPsec as well, but I think IPsec has kind of become, in the early earlier of it's IPsec or TLS. I believe now that IPsec has come as a, as, a, as a secondary option for encryption, the main option for encryption is TLS. They uh, have a failure mechanism in there. Um, as we said before, they've obviously increased the bit boundaries between the messages. So they also have a concept of peer discovery, which means that there's a process of being able to discover your interconnect and your, your peer to peer connections around you. A um, bit of conversation at the moment about this, obviously, security aspects of that isn't so great because what you're kind of being able to do is to go and discover a network you're connecting to. So you can discover all the nodes within that network, and that obviously leads to hacking. So, peer discovery is something um, and probably is useful to use within a closed environment. It also has the way of uh, session binding. And this is basically where you have an ability to load share your users across multiple devices and retain a particular session with a particular node over the duration of the session. But the slides further on to go through um, sessions. And then they have the concept of uh, server-client relationship. So the diameter is very much down on the basic. I send a request in, I get an answer back. <coughs> I send another request in and an answer back. So that means also that the server can deliver a request to the client as well. Within Radius, that wasn't true. Because Radius didn't know who all the other people were. So we couldn't send him any instructions. So it was always very much the, uh, the client still had to go into the, the uh, AAA servers, but the AAA server had very much difficult getting back to the client. Okay, so as, as I said, after the working group, they did the first release of the RFC, which was 3588. To that RFC, there's been some additional updates, which are these ones, and then all of the above have been now been obsoleted by the current official draft, which is RFC 6733. Now, RFC 6733 specifies the base protocol. And the base protocol gives you the protocol format, the transport, how the peers connect, user sessions, and accounting. And what they're saying is that every diameter node should support, no matter what application they're doing, they should support whatever is specified within this base protocol. They then <clears throat> to, to add in credit control, account accounting, authentication, etc., we have separate applications. And these separate applications are identified by an interface, an application, there's a slide which goes through, gives you a bit more detail on that. Um, the application specification is defined through an RFC and 3GDP, as well as prior, proprietary. So as a vendor, I can come up with my own specification and get my vendor ID released to me. So very much on the concept of SNMPP, which has a kind of a concept of giving you an OID and all that sort of thing, is that it allows me to come up with my own specification, get it published, and if people want to then communicate to, through, my, uh, uh, through my specification, they can do that through uh, an official release of that application. So the specifications have additional messages, parameters, and defines the service logic above the base protocol. So this brings in the kind of difference of the application. So we got the identifier is zero, down to common, common messages, that's the base protocol, RFC 7633. Then there's just an example of some of the other, um, which the RFCs have come up with, which have a different application ID and a specification. Then you have the vendor specific, which is 3GPP, is a vendor, and they have advanced some of these, all come up with new ones to obviously how to do uh, applications within the, uh, the IMS network. 
And again, they've got they've got an ID, application ID. We've got a specification against it, and they've got a name. I'll just kind of show that the CX is between the CCF and the HSS. SH is between the application server and the HSS, and ZH is the BSF to the HSS. So those are defined interfaces which they um, have come up with, published, and now everyone can now be compliant within, these, within the IMS environment based on these. Within Diameter, they, they specify different types of nodes. So you've got the applications, which is the client and the server. So the client generally performs AAA access control, and the server handles the AAA requests. The RFC then specifies different types of agents. So you have a relay, which is route a message without changing the message. A proxy, route a message and can change the message. A uh, redirect server, so a uh, redirect server, very similar to SIP. I think we're all similar, familiar yeah, with the same redirect server. Yeah. You go to it, it comes back and tells you where, I'm gonna, where should I send that, that message to. Uh, it also gives back to you um, how long you can send that route, set that route up for. Uh, and the other side, the next one is the translation agent, which simply says convert from a protocol to diameter. So IMS took these concepts again from the base and they said, well, let's, let's get a few more nodes in, into the network which actually specifies where these nodes sit within the network and their responsibility within the IMS network. So we've got the DEA, Diamond Red Agent, so it sits on the border of network security. So again, we, you're, you're kind of looking at this as an SPC. That's what it does. It sits on a, between a trusted and untrusted network, does network topology hiding, um, protocol verification, all those kind of things you expect an SPC to do. Then you've got the diameter routing agent, sits in corner, we're finding a single routing and normalization point for network. Just the SDP. That's what that is. That's an SDP. So um, that's obviously allowing you to instead of have a mesh network of having each device talk to each device, you have a central routing agent which all devices talk to and get routed accordingly. Then they have the IWF, interworking function, um, converts to another protocol, same as the translation agent. And again, what's now come out of this merge of stuff is that everyone said, well, why don't we have something called a DSC, which is all of it, uh, depending on what you want to buy, what you want to do, you have a DSC which groups DA, DRA, and interwork and function um, within them. And that's the nature of the beast. It's, but it's an industry standard. It's an industry, <coughs> industry standard that's come in, and quite early too. Okay, so, the terminology which you're going to come up with is um, standard terminology, and that's what it's very good at this point to get people to understand the terminology. So when we have conversations, we all use the same terminology. So what they have is they have this concept of realms, and in effect, a realm is an administrator of domains which is subdivided into a local realm which provides a service to a user, a home realm which the, the domain which a user maintains an account relationship with. Just think of home network. Visitor network. It's that same kind of concept. You can be attached on your visitor network, but of course you're still communicating to your home network for your billing purposes, etc. etc. So a realm, in effect, is is you could look at it as a network. So again, when I when I um, pick up my phone, my phone knows that it has the MSRSDN, and the MSRSDN gives it a realm for the first five or six digits within your telephone number tells it that you are in the realm of EE, your HLR is located in the south, you know, that's, that's the same sort of concept. So then within the realm you have a node, so it's a host process that implements the diameter protocol. So it's anything which has got diameter protocol in there is referred to as a node. So the node is identified by its host name, yeah. nodes.realm.com and of course you have multiple nodes can be within a realm. Then you have peer. So peer is at the connection to the peer from another, for another node to connect to. So that's what a peer actually is. So the transport 
is then the connection between two peers, which is a peer-to-peer -peer connection. And you can only have one transport between two peers. So slightly different if you try to want to work that out into SS7, where obviously you've got the transport mechanism, you can have multiple transport mechanisms into your same peer, which let's say the peer is entity layer 3, you have multiple entity layer 2s into the same peer. So if you lose, this is where it comes interesting with failover, is that if you lose your connection between two peers, you kind of can't retransmit to the same node to peer connection. Okay? So it's something which obviously the failure mechanisms take into account. Okay, the transport layer can be TCP and SCTP. Now, of course, with SCTP, what that brings you in above TCP is ma managing to set up multi homing to give you that redundancy from peer to peer connection across disparate two different networks. So SCTP does give you some underlying reliance redundancy within itself for a peer to peer connection, but TCP doesn't. Connection's there or it isn't there. SCP, you're not know, seeing multi-home.